In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps and rounding numbers. So Microsoft just released some new rounding functions, but I thought we'd use this as an excuse to cover round, round up, round down, integer, truncate, and just make sure you understand all these different options you have for manipulating numbers. Should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're gonna round some numbers. Right, so in Power Apps, we have a round, a round up, a round down, a truncate, an integer function. Whoa, lots of these Excel-like things. But what we find is that people need to manipulate their numbers, right? We think about Power Apps as a way to get away from Excel and to start appifying things. And so the first thing you wanna do is do those Excel-like things. And so this will help you in those scenarios. So today's video is pretty easy. We're just gonna go through some of those functions, how they work, the syntax, and I also set up a little bit of a larger demo just so you guys could have access to it and kind of be like, oh, yay, here's a way to, you know, make all this stuff make sense because I find it slightly confusing. Anyway, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on the desktop, you can see that I have built this lovely little app. And the idea here is I just want an easy way to type in a number like 15.157956 and, um, you know, see the way that that played out. And so you can see that what I've also done is I've just got the different functions. So round and number and zero would just round that to 15. Round number to one would round that to 15 too, et cetera. So I've tried to kind of break all of these down. Now over here, you also notice with round that you can use a negative number. So round number negative one, and in that case, it will do 20. So what it's doing is it's moving out of place. So it's rounding this one. The the, the second digit over, right? So it's kind of moved to the left instead of the right. And then round number five, this was just a nice way for you to see that truly if you have five decimal points out, you know, and you can control the number of decimal points, but you know, see that that rounded to five, even though I gave you six up here. Round up works the same way. It just takes you and rounds you to higher. It always rounds up, right? So even if we change this, well here, we're only 15.1, it's still rounded at a 16. Uh, round up 15.2, that makes sense. Round up negative, that still went straight to 20, which we would have expected, right? So pretty straightforward. And this function, you know, it rounded up to the six as it would have. Round down, same thing, but it pulls down, right? So 15.15 gets rounded to 15. 15.1, uh, came from 15.15. So even though that in a normal round or round up scenario, that's 15.2, round down it is 15.1. Round down here again, we went to 10 instead of 20. And then this one went to 15795 instead of 19576. So a little bit of a difference there, right? The, the rounding can make a difference. Um, int just turned 15 point blah, blah, blah into an integer, which it went to 15. And truncate, What's interesting with that one is it literally just pretends like you didn't enter anything after the decimal. So it doesn't round up, it doesn't round down, it just truncates off all of the decimal points. And notice that both int and truncate, they don't take a second parameter. So that's how those work. If we throw a different number in here, if we throw in 252.9, you know, you can kind of see how that plays out. And the beauty of this is that it gave me a way to visualize these. You know, I, I'll be honest, I was kind of struggling with round up and round down. Not, I mean, I got him conceptually, but I kind of kept scratching my head. Um, so I wanted to point that out. Now also here, I do want to point out though, that if you do um, like integer, so this works with negative numbers, right? So round down to 51.59. Now you notice here that when we did integer, that it went to negative 252, because even though we were rounding down, right? Or sorry, because even though we're rounding, uh, so converting it to an integer, it went away from zero, right? So negative numbers using integer go away from zero. If we do 251.1, integer, same thing. It is converting it, but it is going away from zero. So I just wanted you to have that in your mind that the integer does work a little bit different. 
Um, and if, of course, you have any questions, you can always click on the docs here. So I've got the link right here. And look, I made my text clickable. Yay! On select, I put the launch function. And it'll drop you into Microsoft's, you know, uh, explanation of all this stuff. So, right, and this is just telling you, you know, Ant rounds down to the nearest integer. Um, so it's always going to do that. But remember, rounding down on negatives is away from zero. So a little bit different there. All right, so hopefully that uh, gives you a starting point there. Now, if you do create collection here, this is just create me a collection of numbers because I wanted you guys to be able to see that I can also pass this over uh, there. So I can pass, I can use these functions with uh, a collection number and it'll spit out a table. So if you had a whole table result, you don't have to do each one individually, you can round the whole table. All right, let's go over here. Let's just build a couple of these real quick ourselves, and then we'll uh, we'll just we'll wrap it up, right? Not a lot to do here. So really, this will this looks exactly like you saw over there. We can just say, hey, round, and then what number do I want to round? I want to round 12, oh, 12.5, and then I want to round it, right? So number of digits is required, so zero, and then that spits out uh, 13 as you expect, and I bet you know if I do this to 12.1, Right, because that's the rounding that we learned in school, right? If it's 12.5, if it's 0.5 or higher, we go up. If it's point, if it's less than 0.5, we go down, right? That's, that's, a, it's, it's just, and round is one that makes the most sense to me because, you know, we use that in school a lot, but, but you do have the round down, round up. And so if we just take this same one and we say, hey, just round this up. So it's the same exact syntax, but now the 12.1 goes to zero. And then just remember, if you do a negative here, 12.1 will uh, goes to negative 13, which is maybe not what you thought, right? I would I would kind of have thought that 12.1 rounding up, right, would go back towards zero, but it doesn't. It basically is ignoring the um, the, the negative sign there. The same if we go here to round, negative 12.1 rounds to negative 12. Whereas if we pull in our friend like integer here. And so we just say, hey, integer, negative 12.1. That one rounds um, down, right? And so rounding down is to 13, right? Because that's a smaller number. Um, whereas if we were to round 12.1 or 12.1 without the negative, it would round to 12. So those are the little things. Like if this is new to you or you're the first time you're having to mess with rounding, you're probably going to have to play with it a little bit. And I think that's where just... <laughs> making this hot mess where I can just quickly change numbers really helped me to start to understand some of the nuance there with those. Um, so that's how those work. Over here, you also saw I created a collection. So I just created a collection cold number. Remember, this could be any table. I just did it as a collection so you could see the data. I had a column called my number, and I just threw some different ones in there. So this is a table, as you probably know, right? If we highlight cold number, right? just a single column table. And so then when I pass that over here, I can just say, hey, round down uh, cold number and then one place. So same function, but I can pass it a table here and then it returns, right? The output of this function is now no longer a, oh my goodness, Shane, highlight the whole thing. Try it. Yay! Ugh. Uh -huh. So the output of this is a single column table with my number, but rounded. Um, so, you know, once again, if you have a lot of this you're trying to do with, you can pass it a table. And I did it a collection. Remember, round down is not changing my collection. It's just presenting the collection rounded down. But I could have passed it a data source. So Dataverse, SharePoint, SQL, Excel, it didn't matter. I could pass it other data. As long as it's a single column table, I could pull that in there. And if you're thinking, but Shane, I have them. If I pull in a data source, I got multiple columns, right? So let's just go over here real quick and create, oh, comma, Column two, hi, <laughs> very creative, right? If I copy this, copy, paste, and paste. So now if we press this button, my formula is broken, but if we look uh, over here, cold number is now a multi-column table, a weird multi-column table. But what you can do over here, remember, I can just go call number dot my number. And remember, that syntax takes a 
full table and turns it into a single column table, just returning the my number. Now everything is happy. So if you didn't know that little trick, there you go. Bonus trick. Yay. I like bonus tricks. Um, other last little piece of this. So truncate, as we talked about, uh, truncate is dropping out the numbers to the right. So it's just dropping out the point one. It's not doing anything other than just truncating off. Um, and so right here, I want to get the, um, the numbers that got truncated, in this case, point one. And so what I did was I said, hey, give me the value and subtract from it the truncated numbers. So if I had 12.1 and I subtract the truncated numbers point one, um, then, or sorry, if I have 12.1, so that's the number, and then I subtract truncate of 12.1, which becomes 12, right? 12.1 minus 12 leaves 0.1. And so that's why you're seeing the end here. So that, that is how, if you wanted just to get all the numbers to the right side of that, you could use truncate in a little bit more, of, you know, in a formula like that to do. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention, let's go back over here. Um, you know, we're all really bad about this, right? We go here, write text input, and then we just say, all right, let's make those numbers. And then I put in 15.55. And so then you go up here and you're like, all right, I want to round, what is that, text input to, ah, oh, not border thickness, dot text. Oh, and then I want to round that uh, zero places. Or we're around at one place, who cares? Doesn't matter. Now, here you can see that round yells at me, right? And what does it say? Invalid argument type text, expecting a number instead. Remember that text input here is outputting, um, that's a default, but it's outputting, you said format number, so this is controlling the input, so it only lets you enter numbers into it. But when we reference it, we're referencing dot text. So this is not, um, a number. This is the text that they type in. So when they type in 15 point or whatever, whatever number that is, when they type that in, that data is coming out as text. So what you have to do is you have to wrap it in the value function. The value takes the text 155.55 and turns it into the number 155.55 and then you're able to use it inside the function. So this is a reminder, I've been telling you guys for years, don't be lazy. Just because Power Apps sometimes lets you get away with not wrapping your text and values to use it as a number. This is a case where round forces you, integer actually doesn't, I don't think, right? So if we go back over here and say integer, and we just use text input to dot text, it does not force you. Integer is letting you be lazy. Don't be lazy. You're not Chewy, right? Chewy's the only one of us that's allowed to be lazy. So anytime that I do this, even though it doesn't force me, I'm just in the habit of wrapping it in value because that is the more correct way. If you want to use a text number as a number, put the value function around it. You've been reminded. <laughs> cool. Well, that's everything I've got for today. Nothing too complicated, nothing too hard. Um, remember, if you want this app, you can just go to training.powerapps911.com and sign up for the curated library and you can just download all my hard work. I will also, you guys want to know a funny thing? As I was doing this, I was trying to be fast because there was a lot to do to build this little bunch of apps. So I copied all these and then I was just modifying them and I modified all the text, but I forgot to modify the formulas in the beginning. And for the life of me, like for 15 minutes, I scratched my head, like why is round and round up showing the same number no matter what? Like I literally couldn't think of it. And it's because I didn't change these formulas in the second row to be round up. They're all just still using round. <sighs> what do you do? All right. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, leave them below. Ideas for future videos. All right, this is not a complicated video, but these are core functions. I think getting all these functions out there are important. So that's why I keep kind of intermixing these videos. What do you think? All right, anything else? I don't think so. I don't know. It's lunchtime. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.